WCNC TV Charlotte. This is Flashpoint, where power and politics collide and the tough questions get asked and answered. Good Sunday morning. Thanks for joining us here on Flashpoint. I'm Ben Thompson. Joining me today, Mecklenburg County Commissioner Pat Cotham and Charlotte City Councilman Tark Bakari. Thank you both. Appreciate it. Thank you. First up, early voting now underway across North Carolina. As of today, it's, we've had a few days of it. It includes the presidential primary, races for congressional seats, as well as state, local contests. Uh, there are more than a dozen one-stop early voting sites across the Charlotte area. You can find yours on the Board of Elections website. By the way, early voting runs through the 29th. And then North Carolina's primary is on March 3rd. The South Carolina primary just days before that, and it might be Joe Biden's last big chance at staying alive in the race right now. Biden, the front runner in the Palmetto State, but by a long shot, we should say. Before the ink was dry on their election results, though, in New Hampshire, Biden was already stumping in South Carolina. The fact that he left New Hampshire before the night was over and made sure that his feet were on South Carolina soil, I think demonstrated the overwhelming importance of South Carolina to his continued candidacy. Speaking of New Hampshire, here are the results from that primary. Bernie Sanders taking the win with 25.7% of the vote. Pete Buttigieg in a close second with 24.4% of the vote. Amy Klobuchar and Elizabeth Warren, Joe Biden routing out the top five. Warren and Biden, by the way, we should say not getting any delegates from New Hampshire. Of course, now it's on to South Carolina and then North Carolina. We should say um, it appears that uh, Biden's leading right now in both states. Do you think that he can hold on to that, Pat? You know, it's the whole thing is very fluid right now. And, you know, what we saw up in those uh, two states in the north uh, are not representative of the of the country. And, you know, 99 percent of African-Americans, their voice hasn't been heard yet. So, um, you know, I do uh, I do believe that Biden will will do much better here than he did in the, in uh, those other states. So it's but it's very fluid. And we also have more people in the race. And so, you know, if you look at those numbers you just showed and you uh, bulk them together where the moderate numbers and yeah. the liberal numbers, it's still very divided. So, uh, you know, it, it, it would be, you know, it would be better if we had fewer people. Uh, and I don't know if, but, but it is what it is. So I, I think Biden will, will um, have a, some kind of a comeback. What do you think? Right now, it's the, the latest real clear politics I, I saw showed Biden up by 12 in South Carolina, up six here in North Carolina. Bloomberg coming on strong. That is probably, I think, the, the, the hidden story that I think a lot of people are waiting to figure out how it plays out. Um, with the amount of money Bloomberg has been spending and, and this really unique strategy that a, you know, a multi, multi-billionaire can do that most people can't, I think that Biden's going to come down here and you know, either he's going to do well, but I think at this point he's probably not. He's going to find out there's more pony soldiers running around yeah. here than he probably expected. <laughs> so odd. I, I, it's very odd. But, there's a new Twitter app where you can do it and it will send a Biden created um, auto uh, a critique back at you. So that's a Great. silver line. You should check <laughs> uh, that out. Let me, I'm going to put you on the spot, Tark. You, you're, I, I would describe you, maybe you would say this is wrong. I would describe you as a moderate Republican. Nope, I'm a conservative that just happens to, <laughs> to be, be a professional Republican. and work across the aisle. <laughs> um, definitely a businessman. Does somebody like a Bloomberg appeal to you? Um, at one time a Republican, uh, certainly a businessman. I, I mean, no, I'm a Bernie guy through and through. No, you listen, are not. He, if there's, I mean, I love the fact that he, I mean, I love him from the Bloomberg terminal perspective and the things he's done. Yeah. I don't like what I've seen him do as mayor and other things like that, but you have to give him credit. I mean, he, he's a, he's a businessman. He's professional. I think he's going to be the buzzsaw that cuts through Biden uh, uh, from Nevada as it turns over to South Carolina and then North Carolina. And then I think it's just interesting when you look at those numbers with Bernie, while a lot of people like Bernie won, I think he underperformed. When you look at when yeah. he it went did. against Hillary in 16, right. he had 60% of New Hampshire vote. There's 26% there. And I think the other silver lining there is um, in an uncontested race, Donald Trump in New Hampshire had two, three times the amount of yeah. votes that Obama had when he was uncontested in New Hampshire. So there's a lot of turnout and a lot of um, division still in the Democrat side. When you think about the Carolinas and and how they're at least leaning towards somebody like Biden and, and somebody like Bloomberg has appeal here as well, does somebody like Bernie Sanders concern you getting the nomination? 
I think, um, well, I can just tell you what I've heard people yeah. say, and I've been in a lot of Democratic circles in um, the last week, you know, including last night, um, and I've been in business Democratic circles and in um, other groups. Um, I've heard business people say that they're uh, concerned about Bernie Sanders, and they're concerned also about um, how that would affect all of the all of the people running. Um, so, where but the Bloomberg people have they have a lot of um, you know soldiers out there. Yeah. Uh, I saw I went to a meeting last night and there was probably four people from um, uh, Bloomberg. But I think from, from what I can tell, Democrats are still shopping. And um, the thing that I heard the most is they're not going to rush to vote in early voting because they don't know yet. Yeah. They want to listen more. They want to hear more. They want to see Bloomberg. They want to see Biden. Uh, they they want to see Sanders. And so I, I think that I haven't decided myself. I was a Sanders uh, superdelegate in 2016. And I've certainly talked to the Sanders campaign. And yeah. I've talked to the Biden campaign. Pain. I've talked to Biden, you know, personally, but uh, you know, so I think it's a matter of we just have to wait and see, and uh, we're n they're not going to rush. I didn't see anybody talk about rushing out to uh, early voting. Yeah, I, I just mentioned one other thing. It's important that while all the attention always is on the national stage and everything, yep. there's a lot down ticket that people yep. probably haven't paid attention to. Mm -hmm. uh, I know, you know, March 3rd is early. It creeps up on a lot of folks. Earlier than usual for us in North right. Yep. So uh, everything from there's a lot of good candidates uh, running for lieutenant governor, for example. Yep. Uh, my buddy Scott Stone is working really hard out there, but there are many others. Last night, uh, I was at an event for Casey Visor. Do not forget judges. People always, always. forget mm -hmm. about judges and it's so important. So um, again, do your homework now because you're going to have a lot of options uh, on a ballot that's going to sneak up on you and you're going to be like, oh, I got to go vote. And yeah. you, you got to do your homework. You got county commission as well. Earlier this week, I, I tweeted out a, a list, a link that you can go to and it shows you what your ballot will look like. Mm -hmm. So when you go in, we've all been there, we've all done that. You go in and mm -hmm. you don't recognize <laughs> half the names or half right. the races. And, and this way you can go in a little bit more educated. Speaking of races that are on the ballot that are not presidential, the Senate race, uh, take a look. Maybe you've seen this ad. Um, it's for State Senator Erica Smith, who's running for U.S. Senate. <clears throat> She's one of five Dems in the primary. She's run up to this point of a lean, low-budget mm -hmm. campaign. This, this right. is part of a $2.4 million ad buy by a group called the Faith and Power Pack. Be like, who's that? Well, the folks over the Observer, they followed the money trail. It appears to be a Republican-backed group. Many say this is the GOP's effort to meddle in the Democratic primary and undermine the support of Cal Cunningham. Pat? Erica Smith is amazing. Yeah. And um, she's disavowed this, we should say. Um, well, uh, I'm not surprised because yeah. it's hard. She's in an awkward, very it awkward is. place. Uh, but I do think that, uh, <laughs> that it's going to help her. I yeah. do think it's going to help her. And, I, you know, she has won. She is very well known around the state. She's. I saw. I saw her give some amazing speeches, and she is amazing. We have other candidates running: Cal Cunningham and Trevor Fuller. Um, and Cal Cunningham has the support of the DSCC. Yeah. Um, and but, the, uh, DC. Yeah. The yes. Um, and he had the support of that before when he ran. Yeah. And uh, so I think also that's a very fluid race. But um, the poll numbers have been good for Erica. Yeah. And she's been making headway and getting people getting to know her. And you have to remember you know, who the voters are in the primary. Um, a, a big bulk of them are African-American women and women in general. So uh, you know, it'll be interesting to see what happens. And I, you know, I, I don't like that, that the Republicans did yeah. that. But it might come back and really yeah. help her. All right, more Flashpoint after this.